I'm here to talk about the art fundamentals. These are a basic set of skills that every artist should learn or at least be aware of. It's an excellent starting point for a beginner who is learning to draw from the ground up and I wish I'd have known all of this when I began drawing. If I could go back in time, I'd slap my younger self in the face and say, kid, learn these fundamentals. Think of these art fundamentals as the foundational knowledge that is required in order to create a successful work of art. I'm not here to define what a successful work of art is, but in terms of these fundamentals, it's about mirroring how reality appears, and there are some common topics which enables an artist to do that. Now there are quite a few which can be considered fundamental, but here's a list of the ones that I believe are most essential. Perspective, form, anatomy, composition, value and lighting. There's fab. These are some topics that you could expand upon and there's a lot involved with each of them. It can be quite overwhelming for a beginner to wrap their head around them and to figure out where to start. Now throughout this video, I'm going to talk about each of these in detail and explain why they are considered fundamental and why you should learn them. I want to preface this video by saying that all of this information is here to act as an overall guide. I've come to realise that it all comes down to the individual's intentions. It all depends on what they want to do. Some of these fundamental skills may not apply to what it is they are doing as much as some others will, but nonetheless it will still prove beneficial to be aware of them. So when it comes to the art fundamentals, you are not required to learn them in a linear fashion. Although if I had to decide on what I believe to be the most practical starting point for a beginner, I would say to start with perspective. I guess now is a good time to tell you all that I have a series of videos on this subject and throughout each of them I discuss many useful techniques. Perspective in the graphic arts is an approximate representation, generally on a flat surface, of an image as it is seen by the eye. It allows us to create a sense of space, to draw three-dimensionally on a two-dimensional plane. You may at first assume that perspective is technical and too difficult, but you only need a basic understanding to greatly improve your work. Creating a realistic sense of space is important when it comes to drawing. If you observe some artwork where the perspective is incorrect, you will probably be able to notice it right away. A beginner might not be able to pinpoint what went wrong, but they'll realise that something is not right. Perspective is one of the most essential art fundamentals to learn if you want to create some convincing images. And yeah, it can get technical, but that's the same with everything once you start to progress into the more advanced areas. I guarantee that once you start to understand the basics, you will want to learn more and then apply what you learn when you are drawing. This one seems to tie in nicely with perspective because form makes objects appear more three-dimensional, giving them the illusion of volume. In order to accurately represent the form of the objects that you are drawing, you will also have to consider the perspective. When it comes to these fundamentals, you'll realise that they all seem to merge into each other when you are drawing, and that is why there isn't this step-by-step -step linear way to learn them. Of course you can study each of them separately, but when you create a drawing, you will need to consider a lot of them. When you learn perspective, you will likely start by drawing basic forms on various angles. Cylinders, cubes, cones, all of these forms come into play when you draw anything. If you can confidently draw these basic forms in a planned perspective, then you won't have too much trouble building on them and creating more complex forms. It's an effective way to approach a drawing. You visualise how you want it to appear, you plan it out in perspective and draw the basic forms before building on top of it, rendering and adding detail. Drawing out basic forms like cubes and cylinders may seem like a waste of time, but then you come to realise that almost anything you draw can be constructed by using them. I often draw through these forms, allowing me to get a better sense of the space that I am working in. If I have a cube placed in perspective that I am happy with, then I can use it as the framework to create a more complex drawing. If you want to draw convincing figures, then anatomy is important to learn. In terms of drawing, learning anatomy has nothing to do with the internal organs or what might apply to the subject if you was learning a science. Instead, anatomy as a drawing fundamental has more to do with the human body on the outside, the proportions and structure of the human figure. 
knowledge of the skeleton and the muscles will be useful when it comes to understanding movement and also the form of the body. I personally find anatomy to be one of the most challenging skills to learn as an artist. I will often use reference images when drawing figures, which is encouraged when learning to draw because you are able to observe how the human figure actually appears. Although I am talking about these art fundamentals in terms of creating a convincing drawing which mirrors reality, learning anatomy doesn't necessarily mean that you are drawing figures with the intention of making them look realistic. There are many artists out there who draw all of these stylistic characters while still applying their knowledge of anatomy, instead of drawing characters in a way which resembles how our bodies appear in reality, they are putting their own spin on how they draw them. You'll often notice that many character designs appear stylistic, yet they are still anatomically convincing. There's no rules when it comes to art, these artists out here are playing god, giving their characters inhumane features. Likewise with most of these fundamentals, you are not required to learn everything there is to learn about anatomy in order to draw some fantastic characters. Having just a basic understanding of the subject, like being aware of the proportions, will improve your work greatly. I find that anatomy can be very overwhelming, but only if you allow it to be. There's a lot of resources out there that are suited towards beginners, and you'll often find that information is presented in a format that is easy to follow. You have to take it one step at a time and understand that anatomy is a topic that an artist could study for many years and still not master, but we have to start somewhere. Whilst drawing from photographs still has value, participating in live drawing is highly recommended when it comes to learning how to draw the human figure. Here you have the live model in front of you as you draw, as opposed to looking at flat, static images. Anatomy in art doesn't just start and end with the human body. If that wasn't enough, then it can also cover the anatomy of animals, if that is relevant to you. It's clear to see when an artist has a solid understanding of anatomy. Their characters tend to look a lot more functional and convincing. An underlying knowledge of the human form and how it moves also helps with the placement of clothing and it allows the artist to more confidently portray their characters in a drawing, expressing emotion, movement and intention. I like to define composition in art as a means of effectively arranging the visual elements involved in an effort to convey your intention with an image. Now composition as an art fundamental is interesting because it's more about the finished artwork. When everything comes together in an image, you get a composition. It's a common term in the subject of photography, and it means the same when it comes to art. Except, as an artist, you have the ability to invent what you want in an image. This gives an artist a lot more freedom to construct an image with intention, although it does come with some responsibility because it is you that is making the decisions in terms of the overall layout for the final result. Now if you have an understanding of what constitutes an effective composition, then you will be able to more confidently make those decisions when creating a drawing. There are many factors which can define your choice of composition, and an artist should consider them as they create their artwork. Some common examples would be the scale and proportion, or the balance, pattern and emphasis of the different elements involved within the artwork. A good composition is one that is successful in achieving the artist's intentions. They have effectively designed an image that influences a viewer's response. You've likely observed some artwork where your eyes seem to be drawn to a certain point in the image. Well, this is a result of good composition. The artist would have probably wanted that to happen, and so they would have made a conscious effort when creating the image to achieve that. They would have deliberately reinforced that focal point. Now there are many effective ways for an artist to direct the viewer's eyes in an image and all of these methods can be learned through studying composition. The choice of colour seems to be a common means of doing this, selective colour saturation or the contrast of value. If there is no colour present then the artist might include some implied lines within the image or they might manipulate the elements in the foreground and the background. These are all intentional design choices which constitutes a good composition. Most of the time it's about telling a story within an image, and it's composition that can improve an artist's ability to do that. 
I recommend studying the work of other professional artists and observe how they compose their artwork. With a better understanding, you'll be able to more accurately define an artist's intentions and recognise the compositional elements which make it a successful image. There is a lot to learn when it comes to this topic and it can even help to see how composition relates to photography, as those photographers follow similar guidelines. Composition will help you create more powerful and effective images that do better in conveying your intentions to an audience. Now the majority of these art fundamentals can be immensely broad in terms of what's involved with all of them, and value and lighting is no exception. Now many of these fundamentals will often play into each other, and when it comes to learning about value and lighting, your knowledge of form proves to be very helpful. The subject of colour, which is also commonly considered to be a fundamental, will also be improved with an understanding of value and lighting. It's all related to rendering. The value is the lightness or darkness of a colour, and it is value that deals with light. We are able to see objects because of the light which reflects off them. Without light, we would not be able to see anything. So in order to create some artwork which creates this illusion of reality, we need to understand light, see how it reacts on surfaces. In our artwork, we create the illusion of light through value. Now, a full range of value is often present within the artwork that is considered successful. There are the light values and there are the dark values. And again, the whole point of this is to create the illusion of light, which means you are also creating the illusion of highlights and shadows. And these highlights and shadows indicate a light source. I'm not going to go too in depth as this isn't a video where I explain value and lighting. Instead, I'm justifying its placement in this list of the art fundamentals. There is a lot of information out there and it's another subject that can get technical when it comes to rendering realistically, but I like to think that you can approach it in a way that is suited to your needs. I recommend doing a lot of value studies if you are just starting out and also drawing from life can prove to be very beneficial. The values within an image can be the same whether you are working with grayscale or applying colour. Colour, however, is a subject in itself, but understanding value will improve how you use it. So those are all of the art fundamentals, and again, there are varying lists out there which recommend learning other topics, but I like to think that these that I have discussed today are the essential ones, or at least these are the ones that I found to be the most beneficial when it comes to creating artwork. If you have a good understanding of each of them, then it will improve your ability to draw anything. You're not expected to master everything and no artist is perfect at either one. There's always more to learn and practice when it comes to all of this and I think that beginners should take comfort in that fact rather than being overwhelmed by all of the information that is thrown at them as they learn how to draw. You are in the process of learning, and whilst your artwork will inevitably improve with the more you learn, your artwork could always improve. I've come to realise that when it comes to these art fundamentals, it's not necessarily about how much you learn and remember, it's more about how you can apply what you learn when drawing. The best way to learn how to draw is to draw. It doesn't get you very far if all you are doing is reading about drawing. The only effective way to improve is to put what you learn from reading to use. Now because you are practicing, you should expect to make a lot of mistakes. You can't expect everything to be correct on your first attempt. Drawing is a skill that requires a lot of perseverance and consistent practice. When you are learning and creating studies, you should analyse your mistakes and see where you went wrong. Then you can start making a conscious effort to correct it. Through doing this, you will gradually improve and you will start to enjoy the process of learning. There's a lot of great resources out there that can assist you, and I'll link some down in the description below. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, then please leave a like and subscribe with the notifications on to never miss an upload in the future. If you want to support the channel further, then do consider checking out the Patreon page where I create some exclusive content. But with all that being said, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.